Hi hi Shepherd's Pie, welcome back to the channel. I'm in the world famous world of Dumaghetti famous, ground zero, for a big day today because this will be my first ever interview and I'm going to do it nonetheless with the world famous uh, Mark Fortin, every man has a story. You must have heard of him, I mean he's got like tens of thousands of followers and that. He's kind enough to uh, let me have a little chat in today about the things that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Living costs and the big one, and we're talking the big one, age gap relationships. Because uh, here's a man who's got a lot more experience about it than I have. So what I've been talking shit all week, we're actually going to get it from the horse's mouth now. So uh, buckle up, enjoy the ride. My first ever interview, so be gentle with me in the comments because uh, I know I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to give it a go. Mark's been kind enough to sit down with me, so uh, let's do it. Action. So here we go. Buckle up. Got Mark Thornton here. Mark's going to talk to us about a few things which uh, I know you find of interest in the comments. Um, first of all, we'll start off with uh, the old age gap relationship. So uh, tell us about it, Mark. How big is the age gap? 40 years. 40 years. Mm -hmm. and, I know. And, and what's that? I mean, when you first met, how old were you? How old was she? I was. I was she was six, she was 25 and I was 62, something like that, 64. I don't remember, I mean, I didn't, when I came over here, I wasn't looking for a relationship. I was in survival mode. I was just here to survive. Right. I came over here with like, I mentioned my videos, I came over here with like $600 and pocket full of maxed out credit cards and stayed in a shitty Airbnb up on the mountain, sleeping on a mattress on the floor, you know, basically starting my life over. Didn't know anybody in the Philippines. And dating was the last thing on my mind. Had no intention of it. Never thought about it. And I honestly, even though I worked on cruise ships with a lot of Filipinos, I didn't know that in this country, age gap relationships, especially between foreigners and Filipinos, is, is totally acceptable. I didn't even know that. That, that blows my mind, Mark, and I'll tell you why. I, I, one of the first videos I did on the channel was the difference between Thailand expats and Filipino expats. And I came to the conclusion that 90% of the expats you meet in Thailand have gone there on holiday, they fell in love with the place, they've met a woman or a husband or a boyfriend or whatever and they stayed. Whereas what I found in the Philippines, completely different animal, they came here looking for wives, yeah. and looking for things. And this that's true. You're one of the first I've met yeah. that was the other way around. It's interesting. Yeah, I met a, most of the guys I met here, they got online, met a girl online, you know, chatted for a few months and then came over here to meet him and ended up a relationship, maybe ended up being married. Um, but I, I didn't do that. I came over here literally to survive. I didn't know anybody when I got here. And uh, my life kept getting better and better, started making a little more money, had a better apartment, and I started making some friends and going out, you know. Not like you went out, but I mean, <laughs> we would go out like, you know, once a week, you know, and then I started uh, meeting a couple of girls, went on a couple of dates. Um, I think I went on maybe five dates before I met my wife. That's and, quick then. Yeah, not very many, you know, and this is over months, not over like, you know, a couple of days. And um, I went on Filipino Cupid. Nowadays, everybody meets online, everybody. It was, I think it was Filipino Cupid, and I met her online, and uh, he brought her mother to our first date, which is a coffee shop around the corner from where we're sitting right now. And uh, one thing led to another. We just got closer and closer. It was it was a long courtship, and they call it a recording. They want to be courted. You don't just yeah, like yeah, meet yeah. a girl and hook up with her. Yeah, yeah. And so we spent a long time getting to know each other, like you know, several months. Several and months. Several months, and then finally she moved in with me, which you know was a big thing with the family, you know, because she you know had to go against their wishes and move in with me. So they and, wanted you to get married before none of this living in the Yeah, they didn't like they? that idea at all. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, we, we got engaged, got married, and you know, we've been married for uh, three years now. And the age gap, honestly, you would think that it would be a big issue, but it really it really isn't. I mean, her English is excellent. We can talk about any subject we want to talk about. Um, and she likes the music that I like uh, and, the, and the movies that I like to watch. And we, we just, and we're together all day long. I mean, 24 seven, we're together and there's never any arguing, never any problems. And it just, it's very steady. Three years, um, the relationship is just you know, getting better, you know? And a lot of times, in, at least in America, you date somebody it's hot and heavy for the first couple of months and then it kind of cools down. And then eventually after a year or so, there's things, pet peeves, like the things, the things that she does that drive you crazy. 
and next thing you know, you're getting, you're splitting up. And I don't find that here. It's like the relationship just seems to get better. I think one reason is it's old school. It's kind of traditional as far as like things were back in the 50s or 60s where I make the money, I support the family. Yeah, 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 100, you know? 100, 100, 100. And she takes 100. care of the house and takes care of me. Yeah, no, I, you know? I, I, yeah, I, I, I have a theory, because I say when I've been tired of the video the other day about Thailand, I think every relationship in the world is contractual, but in Southeast Asia, it, it's more obvious. And I don't have a problem with a contract. The contract is that you are the man, you provide, you look after your wife, you look after your family, and in response to that, they will look after you, cook your meals, you know, and, and it's a contract. And yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that because, I don't either. you know, what, what, what's the thing? And people will masquerade in the UK and say it doesn't work like that. Well, of course it does. I mean, they say that relationships are Murray or Why do people have sports cars in the West? Why do people, you know, wear Rolex watches? It's all about contracts. It's all about. Well, I did a, uh, I read an article a long time ago about uh, they interviewed women around the world, you know, attractive young women around the world, and they asked them, like, what are the one most important thing that a man has to have before you'll go go date him it's not how good looking it is or anything it was that he had to be had to have a job or be financially stable for everything the next you know it didn't matter if they had their own money or not that's the one thing they wanted and so women are the same around the world it's been that way since we were cavemen yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you well, know I'm... there's nothing different about it so people that want to trash these filipinas because they're looking for a foreigner because he's stable you know, he's, he's got money, can take care of them, and he's willing to, to look after them and their family. And that doesn't mean they can't love them, you know? No, no, no. It doesn't mean that. Like, people think that just because they were trying to find somebody who could take them out of poverty, doesn't mean that they can't fall in love with that person. Yeah. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. And I've got many, many, many friends in relationships. Most are married, some are just dating or living together. And you can tell by the way these women treat them that they're badly in love with them. And also, I know women whose husbands, they've been together for years, the husband died and left them financially set. You know, they're, they got a house, they got, you know, maybe it's a pension, they got savings, whatever. So they're, they're fine after he died, but they're still distraught. They're yeah. still crying. You can see how unhappy they are. And, they had, and it didn't have anything to do with the finances. They're actually better off now that he's gone than they were when he was alive, but they're still, you know, so sad that they lost him because they really did love him. This is why I'm so happy to talk to you about this because uh, don't want to be too personal about your life, but I know Mark socially outside of the, um, you know, just doing interviews. And when we went to uh, Liquid that time, mm -hmm. I was talking, I think, is it Paul, the policeman, the ex policeman? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was telling me about your motorbike accident because yeah. he'd been following behind. Oh, Steve, 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 yeah. sorry, Steve, yeah. Steve. And uh, when you got your back up on the bike, you'd gone to the supermarket. And when you got in the supermarket, you couldn't remember why no. you were in the supermarket. And he said, Jen just collapsed. She was just in tears. She just fell apart. Yeah. But well, that's love. Yeah. You know, if you didn't love someone, you wouldn't do that. So I know for a fact from what people have said now that you have a genuine relationship. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why I wanted to speak to you about it because it's so easy to get someone in who you don't know and you've never met before and they can say, well, it's great because of this, because it's great because of that. Yeah. You've got no idea knowing what the other part of the equation feels, but I know for you, it, it, it is 100% it, it genuine. It is, yeah. yeah. And something else is like, when you get to be in your 60s, it's not about sex. You know, people think, see these young guys say, oh, they just want to get their hands on a young girl. It's not, you know, that's, that's a tiny, tiny part of a relationship. It's like, you know, the companionship, you know, the things you do together, the life you have together. And, you know, we just, we're just so happy with everything. You know, we, we socialize together, going out tonight to a big party. And we go out and, and meet new people and meet couples. And it's just, you know, it's just a wonderful life. You know, something I never had before in any of my other relationships. But that's caused problems for you again. You know, I think you've mentioned in the other videos. That's caused problems for you with your daughter and your ex-wife. Yeah. You know? Well, not so ex-wife. Yeah, I've got a daughter that doesn't speak to me. You know, yeah. Just because of this. That must be difficult. It is, but I mean, you can't change how somebody feels. You know, you really can. And to so, what am I supposed to do? Be alone my whole life, or you know, get their approval before I date anybody? You know, it's just you know, yeah. and I never hear from them anyways. I never hear from them. I'm like you know. Not even Father's Day, Christmas, I never hear from them, so why should you care 
what I'm doing on the other side of the planet. Now, it's interesting that I, I hear you entirely, mate. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any children, but I posed a question in one of my videos recently. You know, like I'm 50 years old, I'm going out dates with 21 year olds, and I'm thinking, like, am I a bad man? Should I be doing this? And I've got more and more comfortable with it. But the point is, people on the YouTube give the comments because I ask them, "What do you think?" Yeah. And a few have said, "Well, you know, it's a bit creepy when there's more than a two uh, two digit age gap because then they're older than your kids." And well, I don't have kids, so I'm not in that boat. Yeah, yeah. But you are, so, yeah, that, that, yeah. so that's interesting. Well, you know. the thing is, like, if you're like a movie star, or like you know Al Pacino, I think it's like '83, just had a yeah, child, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're all out of boy, great job, you know, yeah, exactly, and they're all four, exactly, you know, exactly, but. Yeah. If you're, you know, it's a regular guy, then oh, it's creepy. Yeah. Um, and I still, and I think also, like, if I would have come to my family or, you know, my daughter said, you know, I got a confession to make, you know, I'm really gay. And if I, meet, I met this guy and I love him, he's 25 years old. It was all fine, we understand. Right. It was totally fine with that. Because I know how they think. <clears throat> but the, the, but the young, fact that it made the <laughs> younger woman, they can't accept that. Yeah. If, it would have been, if I would have said I was gay and I'm with this guy, uh, he's 25, you know, and he's an airline attendant or whatever, they would have been fine with that. That's incredible. I, 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 know, I, know, I know exactly what you mean. Well, it's great that we've done this interview because the reason I got onto this subject and it's something that people are interested in, I just know that from the views. I mean, I'm in my infancy, but the two videos that got the most have been about money and, and age gap relationships. And the reason I did the first interview was I got so pissed off with a couple of vloggers I will not name because there seems to be a split here in, 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 in the vlogging world. You've got the vloggers who are under 40 mm -hmm. and you've got the vloggers who are over 60. And a lot of the vloggers who are under 40 seem to have a real problem with these age gap relationships. And they're walking yeah. around and saying, they hate this and this is sick and that. And I'm thinking, I can't understand what the fuck the problem is. You know what I mean? Why, why do they care? Yeah. I certainly don't care. Yeah. If it works for people, it works for people. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it doesn't bother me. I think they're just jealous because I can't understand why. I think they like the idea of having the young birds for themselves. But who knows, anyway. But that's how it's progressed in terms of why I've been talking about on the channel. But it is marvellous, you know, to meet someone like yourself who gives your perspective, who I know is a genuine guy and I know he's in a real relationship. You know, yeah. that, so that's well, when I came over here, like I thought like, maybe I'll find somebody in their 40s or whatever. Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I find out that these younger women were attracted to me and interested in me. And so, you know, and also didn't have children. That was a big thing. I didn't really want to be with someone else that had children, an ex-husband or whatever, all that baggage. And that's one reason I ended up with somebody that was younger. You know? So that was that was important to you? That was important to me. I didn't want to be with somebody that had children. Because I felt, I almost felt like because I have children, that it was like cheating on them or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it was like, you know, I don't know, that if they saw me, what, especially if they had younger children. You know, they would see that, and I just thought it would be less complicated if I was with somebody who didn't have children. I can understand that if you've got kids, but now you've got another kid coming, so that's complicated. <laughs> yeah. But let me ask you some advice, then, because you've been here a lot longer than me. I, I keep hearing these channels saying, stay away from single mothers. But from my own personal experience, when I was in Thailand, um, one of the things I liked about my second, my long-term relationship, my five-year relationship, was the fact that she had a daughter. And the reason I liked that was I worked out very quickly the way for me to get out of party mode was to say, I'm going to take him to school every day. So by knowing that I had to take him to school in the morning, that calmed me down a lot. Because before then, so I looked for that. So when I've been out on a couple of dates here, very big young they've all got kids so I'm thinking well, well there's nothing wrong with that I mean I think it's a good thing first off you don't want to have you don't want to father a child um, all Filipinos they all want children it's like 99% they want a child so if they already have one you know then you don't have to worry about fathering a child and you can do what you can for the mother and that child I think it makes it easier and I know a lot of my friends who are with women who have small children and they love it they're really happy you know and they become like a stepfather nothing wrong with that and they're you know it all works out you're helping the wife and the, and the child at the same time that's the way I look at it mate but yeah. literally every channel you watch they say stay away from there's, no, there's so many true. misogynists on these channels yeah. like now this and they're gold yeah. diggers and they're this and they're that yeah. you know, I'm glad you said that mate because it's, yeah. it's like uh, yeah, it's I don't true. know why it has to be yeah. like that yeah. 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 and see with me it's like I, I was 
couldn't even imagine having a child again when I first came here. I'm too old, I don't have the money, whatever. But as my life got better and better and my finances changed, and then I met somebody younger and she wanted children, I told her, I said, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, you know, you have to accept that. But if it happens, I'm going to have to. I haven't got stabilization on this. Oh, sorry. Stop. That's, that's yeah. my fault, I should have yeah. done. Okay, it's okay. So anyway, um, you know, I think it's perfectly fine to go out with a woman that's got a child. It solves that problem of, you know, just they want to have a child, they already got one. You that's know, that's all. Why I'm not there. One last question on, on, on the uh, child front of the family question. I mean, don't. Uh, I know you're a very open guy because mm. I've been yes. watching your film for years, but you've said a lot of the last few months or the last year that your heart problems, um, mm -hmm. that you're not going to have another bypass operation. No, know, I'd rather die. But has he not changed since you know that Jane's pregnant? He still have to say that's not no. giving that. Okay, you've answered that very quickly. Because the first thing I thought when he said he's pregnant, I thought I wonder if that's going to change. Well, his first of all, I would have to go back to America. Yeah. Um, it was even though I have Medicare, it still cost a fortune. And then maybe I won't make it after all. You know, because it's and I just everybody dies sometime. But it was such a horrible experience. You, I don't like being uh, not having control of my own body. If you're having quadruple bypass surgery and you're in intensive care, nurses are coming in, they're deciding what to do with you every day. They can come in and take your blood or do whatever they want with you. I remember they were at one time when I, they moved me from one room to another, they wanted to check to see if you had any like, sores on your body. They come in, they're rolling you around like, you know, they're looking anywhere they want on your body and you have no privacy, no, no rights. You know, you're like a lab animal. Oh, I, I get you 100%. Yeah. I mean, I've not been in that situation, but yeah. I understand. And so I just, like, I would never go through that again. Yeah. You know, I'd never go through that again. I, I just take care of myself, and um, I'm happy with the health care here. And I mean, someday I'll die. And that's a that's a hard hard uh, conversation to have with your younger wife or girlfriend. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. You have to talk about it. You know, you have to say, look, I'm going to be gone someday. And when I'm gone, my wife's still going to be a young, beautiful woman. I don't want her to be alone for the rest of her life. I told her, that when I'm gone, don't mourn for a whole year or think that you can't have a relationship for a year. I mean, start dating the day after I'm gone, after the funeral. I don't care. You know, I want you to have a happy life. I hope you meet somebody even better than me. But he thinks you will. I hope so. I hope so. I don't want her to be alone. I know one of the bar owners. Uh, That's selfish to that be that way. I think the Philippines right now, but I just say, it obviously won't affect, I'm not suggesting for one second gen will be like this. Yeah. But one of the bar owners uh, over there, she's a Filipino girl, maybe I got very friendly with her, is like friends, nothing yeah. more than that. She was married to an English guy, yeah. and um, they were married for about 10 years and he died. And uh, I didn't realise until about three uh, days into knowing her, she was uh, gay, she was lesbian. <laughs> Oh. And I said, well, how did that work? She said, well, after my husband died, I would never be of another man, so I had to. <laughs> and she's been uh, like that for the last 10 years. She's got a German girlfriend, and you know yeah, the best, thing. Yeah. I'm thinking that's, uh, no. <laughs> that's a strange yeah. way of looking at it. No. Yeah, I want her to, to go on with her life, you know. She's going to be young and, you know, still beautiful, and I don't want her to be alone. You know, that's selfish. I was watching a video around a guy called Living Abroad a few months ago, and he was in Manila or Cebu. And he was interviewing lots of um, girls around the shop and the kind of thing, asking what the ideal age was. And they could tell that he was pissed off because most of them were saying 50. And he's like saying, well, 50, but they're going to be tired and they can't do this and they won't be able to do it. 50. Well, I, I can still do a lot of stuff. But the point is, it got me thinking at the end of it, why would 50 be the optimum age? And I was thinking from a Thai perspective. I was thinking, well, they're looking at it, and I'm probably wrong here. They meet a guy, he's financially stable, they have some kids with him. By the time the kids are university leaving age, that's when he's gone, and that's the age that the kids can support the family because that's the way they work. And I came up with the 50 theory. But since I've been, no, I th I'm wrong now. I know I'm wrong now because I've come here and I've seen yeah. so many relationships with people where that obviously that rule doesn't. Well, there's apply. different 50s too. Like I met guys that are 50 that are super fit. Yeah. I met guys that are 50 that you know are going to probably die in a couple of years because they're smoking and drinking and overweight and everything else. So it all depends on how you take care of yourself. You know? But like I said, we just interviewed a guy a few minutes ago that's 70 and has two small children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's totally happy, you know. Yeah, no, he was. He, I can vouch for that because I, I heard him talking uh, off camera. All right, last two questions, because you've been so kind of giving me your time. Um, the other debate we're having on the channel, and don't ask me why it pisses people off so much. I've done a couple of videos saying you can live comfortably in the Philippines for $1,000 a month. 
I'm living on about 15,000, or I was um, when I went to Sydney or when I blew it, but I know I can live comfortably here for $15,000. $15,000? 15, 1500 sorry, $1,500 a month, yeah, $1,000. Okay. I get so many comments saying, that's bullshit, you need to have 5,000 for this and 6,000 for that. I think, so just the last thing, yes or no, can you live comfortably for $1,000 a month? In the I did it for less. There you go. How much were you doing for? Well, when I first moved here, I was getting my Social Security, which is $1,000 a month, but I still had credit card debt, uh, debt to pay. The minimum, when all those added up, left me with $300 a month. And then I started doing my um, tutoring on English. You know, I was making $10 an hour. So I, mean, I, was, I was making between 800 and 1,000 a month. And I was living in a nice little studio apartment. I was able to go out with my friends, you know, once a week or so. I was able to pay my rent, pay my bills, and I was fine. I wasn't living like a high life or anything, so it's it is the minimum. But you can get a nice apartment here for two fifty or three hundred dollars a month, and then if you've just got like a scooter or a motorbike, you got your gas, and that's it. Your, your cell phone here, ten twenty dollars a month for your load. So yeah, you can do it. I know, I know you have a fantastic life now because I've, I've seen how you live. Yeah. How much it costs you now? How much would you say you have to spend monthly? I, I couldn't tell you. I don't. I don't even. We when we go to the store, we buy what we need to buy. We we do what we need to do. And if we want to travel, we travel. I just went to America and back. Um, I don't even have a budget. I just like, the I, same as me. I, I, couldn't even, I couldn't tell you what I spent. I don't keep track of it. Okay. But I don't buy things I don't need. Yeah. You know, I don't splurge and go you know crazy. I just like if I need something, we buy it. You know? That's the way to be. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. I mean, it's great. I'm so grateful for you doing this. You're the first interview that uh, we've had on the channel. Mark's a great guy. I'm sure you've heard of him already. His channel is called Every Man Has a Story. I'll put a link below. Um, and you know, if you haven't subscribed to his channel, I'll be amazed. But if you haven't, do now because I, I can't recommend you high enough. It's my favourite channel in the Philippines. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.